I think daffodils, I think they sort of get a bad rap. And I'll admit that I was very hesitant to grow daffodils in my own garden. At one point I vowed that I would never grow daffodils because I just wasn't a fan of that typical school bus yellow old-fashioned flower that I usually thought of whenever anyone said daffodils. But I quickly changed my mind when I discovered how many different specialty varieties that are available to grow as cut flowers. And so today I wanted to introduce you to a couple of my absolute favorite varieties. I want to show you how we plant them in our garden, how we harvest them, and maybe, just maybe, change your mind in adding daffodils into your own garden beds. Hey there, and welcome back to our channel. If you're new here, my name is Brittany, and together with my sister Emily, we grow and sell specially cut flowers right here in West Michigan. So today we're talking about daffodils. As I said in the intro of this video, I wasn't always that big of a fan of daffodils. But I had a change of heart when I realized the potential for daffodils to bring in money for us in the earliest parts of our season when nothing else is really blooming in our fields. Now I'll admit, in my early years of flower farming, I was always intrigued by spring flowering bulbs. But I was hesitant to try them right away because as you likely know, bulbs tend to have a higher initial investment. Some bulbs can sell for as much as a dollar a piece, and while that doesn't sound like much, when you're trying to grow on a large scale, that can turn into a big investment really quickly. What's more, some spring bulbs like tulips, they don't perennialize well, meaning that they don't come back year after year, which again adds to the risk and can make it a little bit trickier to turn a profit. And so for me, daffodils seem like the safest and the easiest way to dip my toes into growing spring flowering bulbs. That's because daffodils are extremely low maintenance. They not only survive the sometimes harsh winters that we receive here in Michigan, I think they more appropriately, they thrive during those colder months. Even better, deer and other pests, they tend to leave daffodils alone, so I never have to worry about my blooms getting eaten. And unlike other spring flowering bulbs that don't perennialize well, daffodils, they come back year after year. In fact, they tend to multiply, and in just two to three years, it's normal to have double of what you originally planted. So if you think daffodils are something that you'd like to give a try next year, let me show you exactly how we grow and plant them here at Two Sisters Flower Farm. So daffodil bulbs are not planted until early fall, but right now, during the spring months, it's actually the perfect time to take notice of which varieties that you love, so you know which ones to buy and which ones you'd like to plant come fall. If you think that all daffodils are the same, think again. Sure, you'll find plenty of daffodil varieties in varying shades of yellow, but you'll also find lots of varieties that come in shades of peach, of salmon, of white, and even apricot. I'll actually show you some of my favorite varieties in the next few clips here. I always recommend that you order your bulbs sooner rather than later. It's normal for us to place a bulb order in early spring, just as our daffodils from last year, just as they're beginning to bloom. While we order our bulbs from wholesale now, when I first started, I bought many bulbs from retail, and I always bought from Brent and Becky's bulbs, and I had a great experience ordering through them. We tend to plant our bulbs in late October or early November, which for us usually happens right around the time that we finish digging our dahlia tubers. Now you can plant your bulbs anytime in the fall. You can even plant them into early winter as long as your ground hasn't yet froze. So when your bulbs arrive in late summer or early autumn, you're gonna wanna dig a space for them to grow. Now, we plant our daffodils in long, straight rows, but don't be afraid to scatter these guys into your garden beds or even your landscape borders. 
daffodils, they're not picky, but they do appreciate well-draining soil. So the general rule of thumb is to plant daffodils at a depth that is twice their height. We try and space our bulbs, you know, six inches deep and six inches apart. And then we simply cover our bulbs with a layer of dirt. is to wait and once spring arrives simply enjoy your blooms daffodils they tend to be the first thing to wake up in the garden and they are a welcome sight after a long winter many varieties are lightly scented and i can't help myself i love harvesting handfuls of these spring blooms to bring inside and help freshen up my space when it comes time to harvest if it's the longest space life that you're after you're going to want to pick your daffodils before they're fully open. Typically, we pick our daffodils when they're still in goose snack stage, meaning that the buds are completely colored, but they're still slightly knotty. That's when you can expect about a week of vase life. Personally, I pick flowers when they're more wide open too. When it comes to spring blooms, my mantra tends to be, you know, no flower left behind. I just know that when I do that, I'll probably get a slightly shorter vase life. So when I harvest daffodils, I don't actually cut them. I reach all the way down to the very base of the stem to snap it off. I found this method to be faster and I can usually get a slightly longer stem length too than if I were cutting with snips. You'll notice too that I'm not harvesting the leaves. I'm just picking that central stem. And that's because in order to recharge for next year's blooms, that bulb needs to be nourished to the photosynthesis, which takes place with those leaves. As spring fades into summer here at our farm, the leaves that are left behind, they'll start to turn yellow and they'll actually fall over. And once this happens, it's safe to prune the leaves to the ground and tidy up your beds. Yeah.
daffodils in a nutshell. I know that I'm excited to add to my collection of daffodil varieties this year, and I hope that this video inspires you to start growing some daffodils of your own. If you enjoyed this video, we'd really appreciate it if you'd give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button below. As always, thank you so much for tuning in, and I will see you in the next video.